Some girls like a wild Bonjour. To come Comment ça va? Greetings, hats and cats. This is your friendly jazz singer, Carrie Chris, joining you from Paris, France, for another Create Now, sponsored by the Nebraska Arts Council. A one, a two, a one, two. Well, if I had a cat that I could call my kitten. Demystifying the creative process. Step three. Once we've clarified the goal, we need to assess what tools and skills we have at hand. I think that'll be simpler if I just give some examples, because um, for different projects, this can mean different things. And especially in a pandemic, we only have so many things at our fingertips to work with between technology, or materials that we can and can't get. Amazon only comes so fast, etc. So we want to just see what we have at hand. So as we saw in step two in my pandemic project, here the goal was to clarify the understanding. So I needed to use materials that would not only show the exponential factors relatively easily, but I also needed something that people could connect with, could see sort of their own humanity in. Hence, the use of the Q-tip. It kind of has a head, it, and if you slap a couple of arms on it, it looks kind of human. Plus, I had a whole big box full, so I was able to show the exponential math relatively easily. So this is just one case of making the best use of les moyens du bord, as the French say, or the means at your disposal. If you want a more in-depth, step-by-step view of how I chose materials for my Do's Do Blues project, hit subscribe and you'll be notified when that video is ready. And once again, don't forget, whatever you have at hand is good enough. Super! Bravo! Good job! Depending what your urge is, you may or may not need the help of other people. With the confinement, I had to figure out how to do the exponential math project all by myself. But for some things, you just can't go it alone. So whether your project is for professional purposes or just for fun, you want to make sure that when you choose people to work with, you're making things easier on yourself rather than harder. Here are some things to consider when choosing the best people to work with for your project. Proficiency. Can they actually do what I'm asking them to do? Will they be available when I need them? Does it matter if they're anywhere near where I am right now? And of course, tying it all together is attitude. The willingness, enthusiasm, flexibility, all these other factors which make it a pleasure to work with each other or not. The more you can do to keep the process fun for yourself and others, the more willing you'll all be to stick with it and see it through. And this was a big factor in my project was, are they tech savvy enough to deal with the recording process at a distance? But that mostly depends on the project. Of course, this is just a short list of some basic considerations. Are there any other special skills required? In our collaboration project, the most important was that they be able to improvise in the style I was looking for, as well as read the music arrangement quickly and efficiently for one-shot recording. I was lucky in my case, proximity wasn't really a factor since we could record at a distance, so I was able to call on the most proficient and available people from around the world with a high skill set and a great attitude to satisfy our mutual urge to make music together. And last but not least, the time factor. Once again, this depends on the nature of the project itself, 
But I can tell you one thing I've learned over the years is that whatever time you think it's gonna take, it's gonna take more. Way more. Which brings us to step four. Setting reasonable expectations. But I think this video is already long enough as it is. So stay tuned and we will talk more about demystifying the creative process.